Hey guys, Kane here. I've got another 1v1 for you today. It's going to be between Failure and Orphilius on the map Tartarus V7, uh, which is a pretty interesting map. Um, it has, you know, large concentration of mexes in the center, a couple of uh, metal extractor spots up here on the hills, uh, on these large plateaus that you actually can't get to without something that either jumps or flies or uh, climbs up the walls. So we usually see something like, um, usually clickbots actually, and then sometimes people either terraform or uh, get these after they air switch or I mean there's a lot of creative options that you have here and then of course this is these small hills that usually cause radar shadows from the radar in the main base so it's always a good place to approach from with your raiders since uh, they are bot pathable at the very least um, usually don't see much uh, tanks or light vehicles or that sort of thing but uh, it's not unheard of so uh, anyway I guess we'll go ahead and jump right in and uh, here in the northeast we're going to see Orphilius he's going to be using the green cloak he bought uh, down here in the southwest we'll see uh, failure with the red clicky bot factory as well. Um, looks like they're both going to be opening with a couple of glaives and it does look like both are using their support commanders which is the most common type of 1v1 commander. Probably don't need to say that anymore but uh, anyway it's true. So we see a couple of metal extractors, solar collectors coming up and then LLT from Orphilius and interesting how he's placing the LLT um, behind these solar collectors and facing the southern side. Something that Orphilius does from time to time is to uh, create a small wall of solar collectors. I've noticed that's been gaining popularity because it's a pretty good idea and uh, hiding your LLT behind two solar collectors covers it a little bit and having it um, positioned to defend any advances across this wall is always good since like I mentioned it's really common for raiders to come over these hills. Um, and it does have pretty good visibility as far as uh, the approach to the factory. But uh, we see a few glaives now coming in from Failure, and they'll be uh, harassing Orphilius just a little bit. Orphilius just now spying out the glaives and is going to be retreating back to his base here pretty quickly. Four glaives out now for Orphilius, or uh, Failure, shouldn't, Failure shouldn't want to take this fight and needs to uh, definitely turn tail. Looks like Orphilius is going to pull back. Oh, a little bit of a uh, give and take here. It's always interesting to see Orphilius try to come in to scout, but uh, was quickly denied by the LLT there in Failure's base. Uh, looks like no casualties so far in this engagement. A lot of uh, positioning going on. So uh, it's a pretty good indicator to me that this is going to be a high micro match, which is really my favorite type of match. So I'm really happy to see all of this. Um, looks like Orphilius is going to get a chance to dive in here. Uh, both players losing one of their glaives, so ultimately not a favorable engagement for either player. Both of them want to uh, try and establish a strong front line, so I would imagine that's why Orphilius is trying to push so hard here to keep these glaives back. They're about to run into the commander, though, which is going to be uh, pretty advantageous for failure, and so quickly these glaives turn tail, and actually down to the southeast plateau, which is an interesting move. That's going to put uh, most the entirety of Orphilius' military out of position, but it uh, looks like he's going to go for a suicide raid here, which is a bit of a strong tactic, but oh, he's able to clean up these glaives really well. Look at that, didn't even lose a single one. Um, should probably charge west here to hit this constructor. Ah, this defender's about to go up. Oh boy, and these glaives are bunched up too. Eesh. It uh, looks like one of them's going to be going down there. But, uh, well, that's not so bad, I suppose. They uh, do take out the defender. They're going to uh, lose another glaive here to uh, another defender. Probably want to take this out quickly and then dive, just dive back in the... Oh, man. Oh, that didn't go as well as he was probably hoping for. All of his glaives ultimately went down to the stack defenses. Um, this is pretty squishy. He had the opportunity to, uh, the opportunity to head down to the southwest here. Take out pretty much all three of these economy buildings. But, I mean, all in all, I don't think he should have been quite so aggressive with his military. Um, militarily now he's at almost uh, I mean, looks like 100 metal disadvantage which is just a couple of glaives or thereabouts but um, it can certainly be a big deal here in the early game Let's see here I have uh, one two looks like three glaives up so far from failure and uh, oh wow still five glaives up from Orphilius and Orphilius has been expanding to the west pretty quickly and uh, looks like he was starting to terraform a ramp here although he seemed to have missed that I'm not sure exactly what happened there uh, but anyway, we see uh, this group of glaives going to be hanging out again, this time along the uh, west side. I would imagine he's probably going to go over this wall this time. And or, uh, Failure, very much on the ball, has his three glaives in the position, ready to intercept. Um, ready to retreat all the way back and make Orphilius take as many casualties as possible before entering the base. I'm not quite lining his glaives up as well as he could be here, but must be focusing on something else instead. Looks like uh, we can see both players microing both of these groups of units here which is uh, to be expected. Orphilius has definitely an overwhelming force at this point. Um, economically, he's actually behind failure. Well, uh, yeah, pretty significantly behind, especially since he has only 12 energy coming in per second. Uh, that means that rather than 16 metal, he's actually at 12, which uh, makes me believe that failure's probably been building more static defenses. Um, well, uh, yeah, but not significantly. Not enough to uh, 
uh, cover the gap here. I'm not sure what exactly is going on, what failure has been spending his metal on. Uh, pretty expensive commander morph here, which could be a big part of it. Um, ultimately, this large group of glaives is going to play out very well for Aphelios if he can keep it together and, you know, use it to keep whittling down the raider force from failure. Uh, he has the mobility at this point. If he can overwhelm failure's military significantly, he can raid out the majority of the economy. Uh, and I heard a, a hammer shot coming out from Morphilius, which is always good to see. Looks like he's going to be trying to take out these stack defense as well as he can. Uh, pretty large pack of glaives now heading in. Um, going to close in on the commander. He's going to be taking those out pretty easily with his beam laser. Uh, like an overpowered LT almost. And now Orphelius' glaive force comes in. Able to clean up but actually just going to be retreating back to sort of centralized position. Uh, economically, I would still say that Orphelius is behind. He needs to be building some more um, solar collectors. And there we see the ramp that I mentioned earlier. Pretty common strategy, uh, especially in 1v1 on this map. Uh, if you're going to start with cloaky bots, which you usually do because you want the mobility and I mean just the awesome raiders that you get, and then uh, eventually you will want to take those metal extractors. So just a little, you know, whatever, two, three ammo. I don't really know how to measure the units here, but you know, a thin little ramp that your units can get up. You only need the constructor to get it up there. And uh, oof, suiciding into the defender certainly not necessary. Oh boy, and taking a shotgun blast to the dome. All of these glaives. Making, uh, making sure to stay away from that commander. Very wise decision. Able to kite out some of Failure's own glaives and uh, ultimately whittling down the force pretty significantly. This hammer continuing to bear down on this fortified position out here to the sort of central eastern side. Um, and it looks like uh, quite a bit of defender wars as well. So here we're seeing the defender meta in full swing, which is uh, pretty popular, especially on the smaller maps. You end up porking towards the center because you don't really want to yield um, control of the center to your opponent at all, of course. Ophelius this whole time has maintained military superiority, at least local superiority. Uh, I'm a little bit puzzled how exactly he pulled that off, <laughs> given that uh, Failure actually had the economic advantage for the most of the game. Um, I can only speculate that Failure has been using his metal on something maybe less useful. Uh, uh, I mean, this Commander Morph seems to have been fairly expensive, but uh, I can't imagine that would account for the entirety of the cost. Ophelius actually also morphed his Commander to level 1, um, and also has a beam laser and a field radar module as well. Which is interesting to see. Uh, speaking of radar, I'll, I see uh, both players made sure to position forward radars on the map. Um, both should have pretty good visibility as far as what's going on here. I think Orphelius with his field radar module on his commander uh, doesn't quite have visibility into Failure's base. And we're seeing Failure, by the way, producing hammers uh, apparently to counter Orphelius' own hammer and uh, pork wall sort of strategy going on. Uh, I should also mention that Failure's completely neglecting the southeastern corner, which is I mean, super, super common. You can't slide him for that. Uh, he probably has never seen a replay where someone actually did capture those corners, but um, very important to do so. There's one, two, three, four, uh, sometimes five metal extractors that you could include as being in those corners, um, which if you take and your opponent doesn't is like 10 metal per second that you'll have that he won't. Uh, for this, beginning to pull ahead pretty significantly here. Um, still behind on energy, has been uh, floating metal and actually is accessing at the moment. Uh, and has been for quite some time, but uh, still pretty strongly outstripping failure and uh, looking to do so even more strongly as he builds up the metal extractors on the plateau here, presumably going to put some uh, wind generators in there as well. And uh, moving in here with a much larger force of glaives, you see that Orphiz definitely wants to be forced engagements at the moment since uh, he has the stronger force. If he can force failure to put his army in front of uh, Orphiz's own army, he can whittle it down and uh, make sure there's essentially no resistance heading into the late game border. Phileas looks to be uh, moving in for the kill right now. Going to need to take out the stack defenses first. Um, going to be charging into the glaives. Not necessarily the best decision. Uh, this LT is going to be causing a lot of problems for these glaives. Honestly, it's probably worth building just a single Zeus. Uh, it also looks like Ophelius has been defender pushing down the southeast side. And very interestingly, he's actually cut off Failure's access to the southeastern plateau, which is a very interesting strategy. Um, that makes a lot of sense to me. Uh, if you can essentially deny this to your opponent, then uh, you've really cemented your advantage here. Uh, pretty aggressive usage of the comm, but I think it's you know an acceptable level of aggression for your comm. You want it to be doing something, and I don't think that he's putting it in too great of jeopardy, although it is very far forward. It's actually the most forward part of his military. Um, we see that the glaives are regrouping along the western side. Need to drive back this commander a little bit. Uh, this shotgun is, I mean, going to work very well against the glaives, although it is a lower rate of fire than you see from the scalpel. It's still certainly can't feel very good. And these glaives are so bunched up, they're getting hit by the splash damage perfectly. They need to be line moving or surround moving. And uh, there we go. Seeing all but two of the glaives go down. So he does get down the commander, but it leaves himself in a sort of precarious position where he doesn't have much mobile uh, military going on. Uh, he needs to get a constructor down here to try and reclaim as, as fast as possible. Same goes for 
failure, of course, but um, a couple of defenders here are going to make that a little bit difficult for Rafiz. He'll need to clear this out. Uh, looks like we're still seeing pretty heavy investment in the Claves. Uh, as far as failure goes, looks like he's going to be switching over to Zeus's, trying to break down the support. In fact, five Zeus is queued up. He's going heav heavy into the Zeus. Um, I'm not sure that's the right decision. Certainly not five of them in a row. Uh, it's, uh, I think Hammers would probably do better, but those are getting raided out as well. So maybe Hammers plus Warriors to stop the Blades from coming in, then using the Hammers to take down the uh, defenders and that sort of thing. I mean, one Zeus makes a lot of sense to me. Five Zeus is in a row. This is going to leave him without much of a follow-up for us unless he happens to actually steamroll or feel this, which I would be very surprised by, although it is certainly a possibility. He is... Um, taking back a lot of ground here and uh, denying Orphelius much, but I mean, look at the economy now. Orphelius is just overwhelming failure so massively. He has almost triple the middle income, so um, in my opinion, this game is almost certainly over. I don't think that failure can produce Zeus is quickly enough to counter the glaze that are going to be coming in, in here pretty much in a constant stream from now on. If you look at uh, over here, Orphelius actually has finally gotten a caretaker up. He's producing one second glaives. So uh, there we go. Uh, Filler finally throwing in the towel there. Pretty quick little game. Kind of interesting to see. I really liked the micro that we saw there. And I really liked, uh, like I mentioned right here, this push along the southeastern corner to deny uh, Failer from grabbing this plateau. Uh, I thought that was really actually a stroke of genius by Orphelius. And I think it's something I'm going to try in my games from now on. Um, I feel like Failer should have been a lot more aggressive taking the plateau first of all. Of course, I would have liked to see both players try and go over this hill a little bit more. Um, I would have liked to see Orphelius be a little bit more, uh, I guess, intentional about which engagements uh, he chose with his glaives and whether or not to dive into the enemy base. Uh, I mean, it's been said a lot recently, but it's worth repeating. You usually don't want to be attacking the main base. You know, I mean, if you're able to do that profitably, you've essentially already won anyway. It's usually much more profitable to either attack the peripheral mexes or get behind the front line and attack the mexes in between the base and the front line. Um, which are usually the least defended and definitely the most vulnerable and profitable targets for these glaives to attack. Uh, I, I really don't agree with just suiciding massive groups of glaives into the enemy base, although it did work out for Aphelios this time. Um, yeah, interesting game. I really enjoyed that. I hope you guys did as well. If I missed anything or if there's anything the players could have done better, let me know in the comments. Other than that, I'll catch you guys next time.